Okay, so welcome back to part two of one. And <laughs> we were finishing off and Ebony was uh, describing ego and ego death. And you were describing how, um, particularly about uh, ego putting you in a safe space um, and kind of insulating you from basically the world. Um, and I agree about that. Like, I feel like particularly like ego, um, for most of us, we would recognize ego as a place of like, you know, like this is what I'm confident in, you know, this is what like I do, like this, whatever. And that's not ego. Like ego really is the, uh, the projection you have of yourself in your head. So um, like you were saying, ego allows you not to grow because you go say like, that's not me. Like ego tells you like, I'm good at this. Um, not like that you're not good at it, but like I have this together. Um, I am good at this. This is not a problem that I have. Mm -hmm. um, and one part of the book, it talks about integrity. And it says like, for most of us, we know integrity in like, the moral definition of it, like the my favorite definition of integrity is doing the right thing even when no one's looking. But it was saying before that, integrity was defined as like a physical type of thing, like a whole integrity and fight as a wholeness. Um, and I feel like when you haven't had an ego death, you haven't reached the full integrity of yourself because you haven't allowed yourself to like really delve into yourself to understand like, you know, what are my shortcomings? What are my fears? What are my successes? Um, what do I love? What do I despise? What do I want? And if you haven't taken the time to do those things and understand by yourself, then you have no full integrity of no full wholeness of yourself. And mind you, it's always gonna be a learning thing but if you're already in a growth mindset and learning, you kind of already kind of have the wholeness there. And you, what you're doing is you just keep adding to what you are until you're growing and expanding. Um, but if you're stuck in your ego, you don't leave yourself any room to grow. Um, so they're just saying like, in order to get to your zone of genius, ego cannot live there. You have to allow yourself the space to grow and to um, come to a, a fuller understanding of yourself. Mm -hmm. And one, like you're saying, understanding what your upper limit problem is, when it's presenting itself, to address it and be fully aware of it at the moment, and then to solve it and move past that and to get back into your space of happiness and abundance and success and creativity um yeah go ahead okay yeah yeah yes. not really an aha moment but it's just like a, a deeper connection because it's like that's another part of the reconciliation that that i was talking about once you choose to live you understand that with living you're being open you're being vulnerable so there's going to be ups mm -hmm and downs and one way to kind of like overcome all of this and kill your ego is to love both your ups and downs equally mm -hmm. the same as if you know when something bad is happening what you consider as bad is happening to you for you to celebrate it ask questions get curious about it dig in it understand it and love it because in those moments that's where you stretch grow create you know more uh, resiliency and you become more anti-fragile because you're understanding you're being curious about those things and a lot of the times you know we're afraid to do that <laughs> also I would say is that like what you were saying about you know the ups and downs it's also um, being taking time to actually really look at the the forest and not the trees. So actually like, it's hard to do, but actually being like really conscious and realistic in a situation. Cause mind you, my dad says it all the time, 99% of the time, everything goes right. And then traffic, days ruined, uh, you know, something so small, but 99% of everything in your day 
went exactly as it was supposed to. Um, and Disney didn't. Go ahead. But that's what I was saying, like, because in the loving it all, you realize like, oh, it's my expectations that are causing some sort of like riff or feeling or emotion. But if I realize like, oh, this bad thing is an opportunity, then that means kind of like what you were saying before you're like, oh, I'm waiting on the bad things to go away so I can get back to celebrating. Once you flip it on this head and realize like all of it is a part of your experience and you're celebrating the good, which means you're also celebrating the bad like it was good because you understand what you get for the, from those bad moments or those out of control moments is much more, you know, important than what you get from when things are easy and going great. And so it's realizing like, oh, the bad is not necessarily bad for me and the celebrated. So for instance, if you're in traffic and you go, dang, I was going somewhere, then really it's a mind shift, you know, your attitude about it. Like, well, oh, maybe if I had been you know, 10 seconds early, I would have gotten the attitude, you know, a car accident. So being, you know, being trapped in this has saved my life. Or, you know, that's just a positive way of shifting it. Or you can go, oh, this is an opportunity to turn on my favorite jam and sing my heart out to get my stress out before I get to where I need to go. Or this is a chance for me to kind of like readjust what it is that I'm thinking, but always celebrating in the moment. So it's not like up and down, up and down with your emotions and your expectations. And I would say, don't be like me and be like, well, you can't be late twice. So I might as well stop and get that coffee I wanted. So <laughs> that's my readjustment. I'm like, well, I was hungry and I'm already late. So let me go to the drive through. And by the time you get to the drive through, traffic might be better. I'm just saying. But anyway, mm -hmm. but I agree with you. And I also feel like uh, what we're speaking to is in the ego death, like the things that don't work out, even that you really want it, you go, oh okay one for me because you didn't realize it just wasn't your thing mm -hmm. it, it it just wasn't meant for you and you might have tried really hard to get it and there will be some disappointment but you'll realize that you're a lot less disappointed than you thought if you killed your ego and you haven't told you everything's supposed to be for you you're not entitled to everything that because you put in this work it has to be given to you no no and so when it doesn't work you'll be like man, I really wanted that and move on to the next thing. So those, those, those lows aren't as low as they used to be. I will say that. Um, let me move on. So do I got any notes? You skipped over any of the little, I, I did skip over a few notes. I picked up a few of them. Let me see what one, let me see what one of your notes are. It ain't like you and we got a few. You can't see because of the, Look at this. If you can see the green, because the green, because the green screen. Oh, well, just keep going. No worries. Just, no, it's, just it's cool. Keep already, because um, this going to be a long video. It's okay. We got 40 minutes, I guess. Yeah. Um, what's really interesting is this is just a, a side note is I've moved further into the book than what we're discussing. And I thought it was like really cute because I know your mission in life, whatever. And I saw like a little note made to a question to your mission in life. And I was like, oh, oh, Ebony, oh. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Th this is, this is another one. Um, so they were talking about, how do you say this? Um, some of the things that we do to like upper limit ourselves. And the very first one that came up was worry. And worrying, they said, is usually a sign that you're upper limiting yourself. Um, because a lot of times worry is not based in reality. Right. Um, and uh, my dad, he used to always say, why would you worry? If there's a solution to the problem, then why would you worry? And if there's no solution to the problem, then why would you worry? And you try to adapt that is hard. I know that sounds like, like a lot, but the truth of the matter is like, 
when you really can't adapt that, one, people will be like, you just do. She don't care about nothing. No, it's just <laughs> like, look, there's nothing I can do. So, um, and if there's something I can do, then I'm going to handle it. But if you can uh, adopt that uh, attitude, and if a lot of it is basing it in reality. It's actually like looking at the thing you're worried about and actually breaking it down and going, is this a real worry that I'm actually having? Or am I upper limiting myself? Am I creating a worry for myself because I can't feel this much abundance and this much happiness in this moment? So I'm creating a worry for myself. Well, you, you're nodding. What do you got to say, girl? Yes. Yes, all of that, all of that. And you got my notes, what I had to say. Okay, so the next one was talking about, <laughs> you the one. And it um, says, if we're in the grip of worrying while someone around us isn't, we seem to have an almost uncontrollable urge to criticize that person until he or she jumps into the stream of negativity with us. Okay, we well, likes company. Yes. That's what you put a note on. Yes. And it's like not only are you worrying, you're like, you have some people like you not worried? This ain't this ain't anything about you. Or just you can just be having a regular, happy, joyous ass day and a great conversation. And that person hijack your conversation and talk about their misery or their four topics or their interests and interject to you their negativity and their poison and how they feeling about the situation. And then by the time you realize what's going on, you already injected. And so that's, that's why they- I highlighted that highlighted that because. It's like, I'm having a good day. I'm trying to keep things light and fun. And then next thing you know, you come and talk about doomsday. Like, what you talking about? If this, if the sky not falling right now, what mm-hmm. we talking? And even I'm the type of person, like, if the sky's falling, I'm finna dance it out. I'm be like, eh, eh, I'll be out there like, ah, it's my last moment. And, this, and I can't do nothing about it. Like, what's the point that I'm gonna sit here and complain and be you know, negative and tell people, oh, I'm so mad. The sky is falling. What are we going to do? I'm like, I'm going to dance. What you about to do? Like, this is my last you. moments. Let me make it pleasant. I'm in total with you. Like, this is very trailer park. This is very section eight. Like, earth, this thing. It's hold like- on, save it. That's for our next video <laughs> in about okay. 40 minutes. So hold it. Okay. Hold it. <laughs> All right. So I will hold that one. But I was like, <laughs> Even in the segment thing, like I was just thinking about, like, you know, my husband sitting there having a good time watching his anime, and I'm like, "Are we going over the budget?" You know, we got some bills going. I just like, and he's like, "Why are you worrying about that?" And I'm like, "I'm not worried. I'm just like, can we have a plan? Like, can I bring you in?" And he was like, "You just worry about money." And I'm like, "I'm not worried about money. I just want a plan. Like, I just want to be like, this is what we're doing. Let's like be mindful of it." And now I'm thinking, I'm like. Do I worry about money? Because to me, I'm being like, I'm budgeting. I'm being like preemptive. I think there's a time and place you should ask yourself in a context like, what just now made me think about that? Like I was sitting down, relaxed, and I looked over, looked at him. He was reacting, relaxing, and I was like, oh, budget? You know what I'm saying? That will just make or- me curious, like what about that moment? Like, what about it made me feel that way and made me act in that way? And I guess that's just the stress management in me because I would want to know, like, what's really you're, going you're on? Right. Because it's not even me looking at him. It's like me being in the room doing something. I'm like, I gotta pay this and that. And then I go and find him. I'm like, hey, have you thought about, like, so you're right. Like, I definitely injected it into his, like, little moment. And he's trying to be like, girl, like, <laughs> I'm just trying to watch my show. And I'm like, well, what about this? That's me. I'm like, God, you such a party pooper. Negative Nancy. (laughs) A Debbie Downer. God. God, He said, I hate you, Alfalfa. I say that all the time. Nerds, just let me live. Just let me be. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So 
the, the book was saying like if you can spot like your your worry thoughts then you can actually like use those to springboard into your, your zone of genius um so he said the step by step is one notice yourself worrying about something ooh, 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 yeah ooh. can i finish that I don't yeah. know if that's what he's saying and I ain't looking at it, but it's like... I'm looking at the book. Go ahead. I'm texting. Go ahead. I, I'm probably not going to say it like he said, but I'm just saying like as a stress management person and like I teach prevention and practicality. So it's like that's where the mindfulness part come in. I have the gift of like just always being in the moment. So like I don't really have like worry. That's not my... That's not my ministry. Like <laughs> I'm good on that. I could be okay in the moment, but it's like if you can focus in on a moment and figure out what's going on in the now, you can always know what it is that you need and implement and what you need in the moment. Right? It's just that we are unaware what we're feeling, what we're thinking, what we need, and that's where the, all of the problems start because and especially if you don't believe that you have the ability to give yourself what you need which is kind of what stress management is when a mm -hmm. stimulus happened and you don't feel like you have the resources to address or control whatever is going on in your environment or whatever it is that is happening to you so the you know once you recognize it and believe that you have the ability to solve it, then the next thing to do is just to rearrange your thoughts and your thought process and your actions and your feelings around solving the issue. Hmm. Right. Pretty close. <laughs> I know I want to go ahead what he was saying, but I'm just saying like in the stress management sense, it's like, oh, um, I, let's just say I drive the work, you know, I'm in traffic and I hate mm -hmm. traffic. And when I get to work, then I'm so irritable and I don't want to be there. And I'm not really enjoying work because the traffic is just so horrible. So then mm -hmm. you go, well, how can I solve this issue? Like, how can I make traffic not as horrible so that it doesn't affect my whole day? You know, and then you could start thinking about solutions to doing that and then practically trying them out. You can go, oh, well, maybe I'll leave an hour and a half early for work so then I'm not in traffic and I'll just be at work early and I can find something to do for that hour and a half. Or maybe I could turn it into a jam session or a karaoke session or, you know, talk to a friend or listen to a podcast where I can use it as an opportunity to grow and develop or ground myself so that when I, it doesn't affect my mood and it doesn't affect, you know, bringing those negative feelings where I view that this is a bad thing and I create more of the upper limit problem in my life. I could just kind of switch my perspective and take it as even though originally it was bad, I could take it as something that is working for me. And then therefore, again, it's not that mood that's going up and down. It's just like, this is just what it is. How can yeah. I, in a moment, make the best of it and make the best of it so that I enjoy it and I can grow and develop or at least learn some damn patience in it, you know? Yeah. And that's basically what he was saying, but more like along the line of like addressing the thought letting it go and then focusing on okay why am I worrying what good thing is on this way here and so kind of like staying in that mood of like um letting yourself kind of deeply feel the possibilities of what can possibly come your way and then later taking time to reflect I'm like oh that was a good thing that came you know in that moment that I was mm -hmm. um Okay, so um, the next one is criticism and blame. Um, so he was saying like, while most worry thoughts have nothing to do with reality, most of the time, so does criticism and blame. Um, let's see, when we blame someone or something, we're doing it because we've hit our upper limit and are trying to retard the flow of positive energy. Um, so interesting, he said criticism and blame are addictions. Yes, because I keep saying, okay, now that you found who to blame, we still got to solve the problem. So why did we waste time figuring out who to blame? That was just a waste of time. 
Mm-hmm. I don't understand blame. For what? Okay, so let's for me, I'll just take all the blame. Let's say I did it. How can we fix it now? Because like who's yeah. gonna waste four and five and six hours, weeks, months blaming it? Oh, it's your fault. Your okay, I did it. My fault. Now what? How can we solve it? Blame is a waste of time. And it's easy yeah. for you to keep blaming things and saying there's somebody else or something else going on when it doesn't solve the problem and you can do that your whole life you could be looking for somebody to blame your whole life and nothing ever gets solved one second sorry and he was also saying like um blame and criticizing allows you to become the victim in the situation um so you take the responsibility of kind of like the issue off of yourself as well um and he also says that I, Blame and criticism are costly addictions because they are the number one destroyer of intimacy and close relationships. Um, And he said, like, for his experience, a lot of times when people are separating, you know, the most thing, the thing he heard most often was, like, I was tired of the constant criticism that I was receiving. Um. Now, criticism is something different. I find that if a person is criticizing you for something that doesn't affect them, then it's about how they feel about themselves. Absolutely. So for me, I am not about to criticize you. Like I, I, I'm around a family member and they always point out a bad, the, the, like the bad. And mm-hmm. they'll be around and be like, oh, I hate that that person's always smack. And I'm like, how are you so in tune to what that person doing that you even know that they're smacking? Like, mm-hmm. it's not like the person is like, Mwah! Mwah! <laughs> like, like, how are you like, I, I, listen, I tuned that out. Like, how do you hear that? I know what you're talking about. And you can tune it out. <laughs> and it's because it's like, my thing is this. You must be avoiding your internal world at all costs to realize that somebody is going a little bit too much water in their mouth. Like, you are avoiding your internal world too much. Like, you got so much water in your mouth. You snack too hard. Like, that is not what you should be worried about. That is not what you should be spending your brain space and time on. I do not understand that. Like, my mind doesn't wrap around stuff like that. The play devil's advocate. We all know there are certain sounds that induce anger in people. It's it's not rational, but it is a thing. And maybe that's a thing. Well, who you want to be in life? You want to be somebody where your emotions are controlled by what somebody else is doing? Because I want to control my emotions. I'm not paying nobody else enough attention that something that they're doing will make me out of control enough for me to criticize them. Unless it affects my own personal life, why would I say it? I don't, like for me, I'm in, like I was talking about this the other day. I'm in a space in my life where I just want to add value. I want to add positivity. I want to add light. I want to add fun. I want to add play. Nothing else matters. Or even like, I don't mind growing and developing with somebody, but that's not something I necessarily add. Those are what I want to add to life. So I'm not going to say anything outside the realm of that. Like, if it doesn't work for me, it's not impacting my life, then I'm not about to criticize you and say this and say that. First of all, I'm not even in your business enough to even recognize it. But even if I did, to vocalize it, it's like you're expressing your own misery because you're running from your own eternal thoughts. And so you're looking in the external world, which means you're noticing more of what's going on in the external world than your internal world. (laughs) Evie Hey, Phew. Um, Hey, Phew. And um, you paying more attention to what's going on in your external world than your internal world, but it's your responsibility to pay attention to what's going on internally for you to know every second of every day what you think and how you feeling and how it's affecting how you're behaving. So if you're paying attention to that and you're paying attention to your breathing and managing your own stress, you really don't have time to, to focus on anybody else and to worry about what they're doing unless it impacts your life. If they If they with you and they rob a bank, then you can criticize them. If they with you and they poorly dressed or they smack while they eating or or 
they, you know, order some food that you think is nasty. What is the point of you criticizing? Like, if it doesn't impact your life, keep your comment to yourself. Really ask yourself, why am I even wasting my precious time thinking about this? Like, I wonder if that, that person is not wasting their time thinking about, well, why that person chose us, you know, a salad or a veggie burger. They're not worried about that. But I'm sitting here like, why they why they dressed in polka dots and stripes? It's not your business. It's a criticism of something you have, you know, battling within yourself. So you might criticize somebody like, you always order a salad. You maybe you know that you should be eating healthier and ordering salads. Um, so you choose to criticize that person instead. Um, you criticize a person for their choice in fashion, um, but you don't feel particularly fashionable or, you know, whatever. So usually, like it says, a criticism is usually something you're struggling with. You're usually criticizing yourself um, and not really the other person, uh, especially when the criticism seems to come out of nowhere. It's usually you're criticizing yourself. So absolutely. And I agree with you. It's just like, I was, you know, like some of us go out and naturally we all have thoughts. We see something and we feel like, you know, especially, um, you know, as a native people, we'd be like, <laughs> you, know, you know exactly what that means. Are you like, you know, but also like, it's the thing of like, you said it, but you also kind of did it, you know, you kept it to yourself. Um, but we all grew up saying, you know, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Um, and it's a per, uh, an important lesson in life. Um, and it actually um, teaches you a lot of grace, to be honest. Um, when we're children, we have like no filter. And so we don't realize like how often we go around criticizing and really just like offending people. Like... <laughs> I had my own kids and like a couple of times I was like, I'll punch you in the throat. You don't know me like that. Like <laughs> no one tell me like, like, excuse me? Like <laughs> I like, you wanna fight? Like that's what you tell me. <laughs> you, like that? you know, but you know, you you teach your children like, hey, like, you know, there's a certain grace you want to give people. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say nothing at all. You know, constructive. Or the best thing is like if you're in a place to give criticism. You shouldn't knock anybody down without giving them a hand up. So if I have some criticism for you, I would also hope that I had some solution to like, hey, this is what you could be doing better. This is, you know, something. And I'm hoping it's not something like frivolous. You know what I'm saying? And with communication, you should also let them know that it's not about who they are. It's about what they do. You know, yes. cause people hear what they want to hear. And it's like, sometimes you have to use these qualifiers so people are aware, like, hey, this is not personal. It's not about who you are. You're mm -hmm. awesome. It's about your actions, your behavior. <laughs> you know, that is something we can improve and work on, you know? Yeah. Or you say, hey, I would like if you... um didn't uh talk to me like this oh so now i'm rude i'm like i hate that yes, again but i didn't say that <laughs> but you me, think I'm like, you yeah, rude i didn't say that you know you I'm think like, you I'm, rude yeah or i'll just be like hey um i don't know if you're rude or not i just don't appreciate being talked like this like it, it makes me feel uncomfortable um and you know i think like the biggest like issue we have especially as native people like your mama be like i'm your mama i can talk to you any way i want to and i'll be like or, i'm like we're both adults now ma'am and even still you shouldn't talk to nobody like we are human talk to people exactly. like other humans stop with this like, like, I am what doing? First. like first and foremost is when you experience your grandma talk to your mama like that and then your mama be crying about it and she'll go talk to you like that you'd be like this weird what y'all doing grow up <laughs> uh -huh. i'm like i shouldn't be the adult here uh-uh we're in the last but, 10 minutes so yeah let's go to the very one of the very last one um is deflecting and deflecting is when you cannot accept the compliment so when a person gives you a compliment instead of just saying thank you 
you go, oh, well, I could do this better or ah, I wasn't as good as I wanted to be or something like that. And you're deflecting away from it. Um, that is a part of upper lending yourself, not living in the space and accepting your accolades. Um, so learn to say thank you and be done with it. If you feel like you need another thing to say, you can also start off with saying thank you. I wish I could have spent more time getting ready, but thank you. You know, leaving the positivity first. But um, we need to learn to accept the compliment and just say thank you. And leave it. And also, like, I want to put this, like, out there because to me personally, I feel, just me personally, I feel like it's disingenuous if you give me a compliment and I go, thank you. I need to give you a compliment back. I go, I didn't know anything about you, but you know something about me. Yeah, I stopped go, doing oh. that. Yeah, I don't do that. I go, oh, thank you. And yeah, I say, oh, thank you. But my favorite is if I believe what they believe, I like to hit them with a thank you, homegirl. <laughs> <laughs> That's the homegirl. Yeah. Thank you, homegirl. Or you know what? I'll be like, if it's something they like, you know, they're like, oh man, that thing's so cute. I'm like, I know. Thank you. <laughs> they're like, you look so cute today. I'm like, right? Uh -huh. I did that. You mm -hmm. know, and sometimes like people are you know like a little put off when you be like I know or something but I mean like you purposely like I purposely put white dots on my nose if you like it you like that's cute I'm like I did that I did that <laughs> 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 I mean I didn't do it for you, you. I did it for me you did, you did. but I was like you know I thought it was cute and so acknowledge it accept your accolades don't be afraid to like congratulate and thank yourself you you purposely went out in those clothes you purposely did that task you did whatever so say thank you leave it alone there's nothing wrong with being like yeah i did a good job i did that mm -hmm. and again that goes into our bandwidth like yeah again if you talk to yourself negatively if you never have anything positive to say if you don't know your own strengths if you don't know what makes you so great unique uh lovable then it's hard to hear somebody else say those things about you because you don't say those things about you. And so it's hard to take a compliment because you don't believe it to be true and you don't talk to yourself that way. It feels odd. But like the way I talk to myself, when people when people compliment me, I'm like, right, all right, like, mm -hmm. duh, like, duh. Mm -hmm. Like you, you saying this because of how I feel about myself, you know, like, right. It didn't come from anywhere else. Like I feel that so I feel that way about myself. I'm glad you see me. <laughs> I see you too. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that type of thing. Because you know I I have no problem with giving a compliment. It's my favorite thing to do is to look for the beauty in people and tell it to them. Because mm -hmm. sometimes like people don't necessarily do the work. People are extremely busy. They don't have time to like or you make time for what you want to do, but they don't sit down and do the work and they don't necessarily know what's beautiful. And if if this is a shared experience, I feel like it's all of our, our job to like, you know, see ourselves in the other person and to see the beauty in the other person and, you know, help them to see their own beauty as well. Which Absolutely. Is what Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and end it on that point. Um, we will be doing another we got video. six minutes. Is that it? Well, we can, you know, we don't got to always push the limit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like so, to push the limit. <laughs> anyway. It's the old dirty <laughs> woman dance. Uh-huh. That's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Are they for real, though? Yeah. If you look on TikTok, yeah, it's pretty close. So. <laughs> We're going to end it there. There will be another part um, to this video. And I guess we'll kind of, I think one more um, video should kind of like wrap up this book. I you think so? You think I so? I mean, truthfully, we we got about what we discussed is almost halfway. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We never know. Uh, things come to us. We're inspired in these conversations. So. We'll see, but we will come back with a part two um, delving more into
to the big leap by Gay Hendricks. And um, I hope, uh, I don't know how Ebony puts these out, but if she puts them out one at a time, maybe you got the book by the next one. But anyway, <laughs> maybe you read So before. what should they uh, comment on? What, what, are, what are our actionables? What, what we want to talk about? In the chat, um, we got some time. We got, like, I will scrolling. say, comment on like, um, what zone do you feel that you're most in? Are you in the zone of uh competence? Are you in the zone of excellence? Have you reached your zone of genius? And if you did, how did you do that? Let us know because we ain't got there yet. Um, also, um, if you haven't heard of upper limiting before, but you have now, what do you think are some of the things you've been doing? Uh, the upper limiting you've been doing to yourself. Um, and uh, what conscious choices you will take now to overcome that and, and to make actionable change. Um, we would love to hear about that from you guys. For um, me, but- oh, oh, sorry. Wait. Go ahead. For me, I want to know about your ego, about what do you think about ego? About how does ego impact your life? Do you think you're living your life do you, do you, through your ego? Are you being honest with yourself? Are you checking your ego? Uh, are you really where you want to be with your in your life or with your life because of you know you taming your ego or because you have completely listened to it and it's gotten you to where you want to be and you're happy? I just want to know, like, yeah, I want to know if there's a person who who said I completely listen to my ego all the time and I'm where I want to be and I'm happy. Because I think you can get to where you want to be, but will you be happy? And I think, like, isn't that the ultimate goal that all of us seek happiness? Yeah. yeah. All right. Sign us off. All right. Well, this was all right. A real discussion, uh, a little subdivision of our podcast with no name. Um, we hope to see you in the next video. And it's been real, guys. Bye. Bye.